Okay. Again, let me welcome you all. My name is Calvin Butler, and I want to welcome you all to my home um, here in Tallahassee, Florida. And for those of you who don't know me, um, I am a wealth management strategist with MWR Financial, and I'm also a logistics trainer um, and, and the owner of the RBBS Logistics Learning Centers. Um, to give you all some background on who I am, um, you know, 12 years ago, I was homeless. Um, today, my, my wife and I, we're doing really, really, really good. Actually, we're doing great. You know, I can't lie. I mean, I can't lie at all. Y'all have to forgive me. My voice is a little still hoarse because I'm still recovering from walking pneumonia. <coughs> so I'm still recovering from walking pneumonia. So my voice is a little hoarse right now. So y'all are going to have to forgive me. But as I was saying, 12 years ago, I was homeless. And I started my first business from a homeless shelter. And I was able to, to, um, to gain some relative success in different home-based home businesses and running businesses from home. And I started applying wealth strategies, the same wealth strategies that are taught and provided through MWR Financial. And through those wealth strategies, I was able to build upon my wealth uh, rather quickly. And of course, got myself out of the homeless shelter. And, and to be honest with you, now I haven't worked the J-O-B in the last six years. And my wife and I are doing very, very, very well. So um, um, that's, that, that's my background. <clears throat> today, I have brought you all here today. And again, you all, please forgive me. Uh, my voice is, is still uh, not, not completely back um, to where it should be. Um, I am recovering from pneumonia. So I'm having, um, so you all are getting my, my distorted voice. But I brought you all here today because I wanted to um, present something to you all. Um, I reside here in Tallahassee, Florida. And as you all know, um, Tallahassee is a college town. Um, Florida State, FAMU, um, TCC. Uh, Florida State has about 70,000 students. Uh, FAMU has somewhere close to 45,000 students. TCC has somewhere in the neighborhood of about 30, close to 30, uh, 25 to 30,000 students. So this is a huge college town. <coughs> so there's a lot of entertainment type venues and things that are geared towards the college student population. Tallahassee is also the capital of Florida. So you have a huge government presence here, um, you know, legislators and legal lawyers and things of that nature. Um, so you have a huge legislative uh, presence here, and it's a big law enforcement town. You know, there are about 13 to 16 different law enforcement agencies that all have jurisdiction right here in Tallahassee. Now, with that being said, most of the entertainment venues and things that are going on in Tallahassee are catered to the college crowd. They're, or, or they're catered to, um, you know, places to eat, hotels, <coughs> things of that nature. Just here, just recently in the last five years, they've started building up, you know, ample theaters and things of that nature. But they do have things that go on here, but they are kind of scattered out. And there's really nothing here that caters to the 30 and over crowd or that, or, or that segment that is heavily concentrated and focused on business and entrepreneurship. And this is why we're here this afternoon, because I want to present uh, my proposal to, um, to you all to become equity owners in um, something that I'm trying to bring here to Tallahassee. Now, as you all know, I am very, 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 very um, deeply involved with MWR Financial, making wealth real. And that's the practice of wealth strategies to, to make wealth a reality for everyone. And through MWR Financial, we offer a product called the Financial Edge Membership. Um, in 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 just to shorten it up, 
basically that membership gets you your own team of financial experts to make wealth meal for you for just $79.97 per month. So I want to build upon that. And what I want to bring to Tallahassee is um, something called the 30 plus entrepreneurs lounge. Okay. Um, networking lounge. Now um, I'm going to show you all some things here. We're going to go over here to LoopNet. Well, first I'm going to show you some stuff on what I posted on Facebook and then, I'm, then I got a presentation that I want to show you all. Let me start sharing my screen so you all can see what I have to share with you. All right. <clears throat> Let's go over here to my Facebook page. Um, as you all can see, once I get over here, I've, I've been posting things about um, this venture. And we're going to get into the numbers. And I'm going to give you all a closer look at the property. I am right now in the process. I've, al I've already secured um, the property. Okay. Um, I've, I've been talking with the realtor. And I've made arrangements to secure this property. The property that we, that we are talking about <clears throat> is um, located in a residential and industrial district of Tallahassee. It is directly behind Parks and Recreation. It's directly across the street from the Leon County Sheriff's Department and you know, and the Leon County Jail and other law enforcement agencies are real close by. So there's a lot of law enforcement presence in the area. And, and that's good when you're wanting to do something like this. What I did not want to do is bring another club to Tallahassee. Tallahassee has way too many clubs as it is. And with the club atmosphere, there is always that, you know, it always seems to attract violence. So um, I don't know of a club here in Tallahassee that has not had a shooting or someone dying from violence because of things that are surrounding that club. So I, that's what I did not want to bring to Tallahassee. I did not want to bring another club to Tallahassee. So what we're going to be putting together is this is a Club 30 Plus where People can book parties, banquets, um, live shows, and live musical guests from the 80s, 90s, and early 2000s, okay? It's going to feature an entrepreneur's lounge and a business networking lounge um, where people can enjoy good food, you know, lively adult networking um, atmosphere. And here again, it features, you know, music from the older crowds. 30, um, from the 80s, 90s, and early 2000s. Now, <coughs> I'm going to uh, pull up a PDF that I put together to show you all what this property is and how it lays out. And, and I'm going to give you all some numbers um, as well because what we are seeking is we are seeking um, equity partners now. And I'm, and I'm going to explain to you all what that is here in just a second. Let me go over here to the um, the numbers here. Let me turn down this sound. There we go. Let me find my PDF here. I'll find it here in just a second, you all. I seem to have misplaced my PDF. Okay, I'll find it here in just a second. Let me find my PDF and I'll find it here for you all in just a second. I apologize. Uh, live on Facebook. Let me find that PDF. What did I do with that PDF? Um... All right, there it is right there. All right, this is the PDF that I put together 
um, showing you all the property. Now, this property is a very large property. Um, it's, um, it has a huge office space with four um, private offices, huge gathering um, area. Um, and, and, and this particular area right here is about 23, 13 square feet, okay? Now, now Club 30 Plus Entrepreneur's Lounge. Now, this is a two-phase type of type of um, type of venue. During the during regular business hours, it is going to be a financial literacy and business center. So during daytime hours, we're doing regular business hours. It is going to be a financial literacy and business center where um, entrepreneurs, business people, uh, small business owners, they can come and they'll be able to rent office space by the day or they'll be able to, to rent a desk by the day or by the hour or they'll be able to come in and pay a fee and be able to hang out in the lounge area and conduct business, okay? Also, we will be having different types of courses and classes there on financial literacy. We'll be educating people about how to improve your credit, how to fire your landlord and get prepared and ready and able to purchase a home, how to um, make money from flipping houses without actually having to flip homes. So we have all these different type of programs <coughs> that we're going to be showcasing. And all these programs are part of MWR Financial. So we, we will be offering individuals the opportunity to get an, a financial age membership that includes all the things that we are, are educating people on. That financial age membership includes your own team, gets you your own team of financial experts, that, and they will work to repair your credit. They will work to lower your taxes and, 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 um, and correct your tax profile so that you don't pay overpay in taxes like most people are doing now. They'll also work to get you completely out of debt in record time. They'll also help set up your private reserve bank account so you can start taking advantage of the stock market gains and not the stock market's losses and start truly building wealth. They'll also get you involved with land banking and get you involved with being a capital contributor so that you can actually make money from the flipping of real estate without having to even touch a home or do any other work yourself because the experts will do all that for you. So during the daylight hours, this is what this um, um, this area is going to serve for. As you can see here, Club 30 Plus Entrepreneur's Lounge. Now, during after hours on Wednesday nights, Friday nights, and Sunday nights, um, we, it's going to um, be a Entrepreneur's Lounge, which features music, a DJ, there'll be a um, 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 bartenders, so there'll be drinks, DJ, but it's, but it's not a club. It's more of a networking um, atmosphere for entrepreneurs. There will be a dress clothes. There's a cover charge. The cover charge will be $30. And there will be a dress code. Um, all, all men must wear blazers or a tie, no tennis shoes and no t-shirts. There, there's an age restriction. You must be 30 years old or older, so 30 plus. Um, um, during those nightly events, those weekly nightly events, um, the area that we have secured can accommodate up to, you know, two or 300 um, people at one time. So we are expecting to have at least 150 to 200 patrons um, per night on Wednesday night, Friday nights, and Sunday nights. Um, if, 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 if you do the average, you know, on that type of participation, at $30 a head, you know, let's say on the low end, 150 people show up through that nightly event. <clears throat> That's $4,500 time, um, three nights weekly, which translates into $13,500 in revenue. The average drinks at bars and clubs here in Tallahassee is usually somewhere between $5 and $15 on average. 
Um, so that so it averages out to about eleven dollars on drinks. The average person when attending events like these or things or or some type of function like this, they will have a, at least two drinks. So you're looking at a, at 150 patrons, um, two drinks minimum. Um, that's thirty three hundred dollars. Um, and three nights a week, that's nine thousand nine hundred dollars. So you have a total after hours revenue projection of twenty three thousand four hundred dollars weekly. <clears throat> now we continue. This is also part of that interior space here. So these spaces are all joined. It's just one huge big space. And as you can see here, you have office spaces here. And we're getting to, um, and we were getting to, to explaining how we're going to monetize this space during the day and the office spaces as well. So <clears throat> just based on the nightly um, networking events that we have on, on Wednesdays, Saturday, um, on Wednesdays, Friday nights, and Sunday nights, just from that alone, you're looking at about a yearly after hours revenue um, before expenses of $1.2 million, $1,216,800. So that's the <coughs> projected yearly revenue that we will derive from just those events, those three nights per week from that from those type of events. Okay. Now, of course, you have expenses. Uh, we've already looked into and priced what it's going to cost us to have a bar service, a bartending service, and they come with their own liquor license. So we don't have to have a liquor license because we're going to have we're going to be um, contracting a bar service to come in. And they provide the bartenders. And, uh, someone has their mic open. If you, can, if you can please mute your mic, Chris. And thank you. Um, <clears throat> but we will have. Um, we're going to be hiring a a a um, a bar service, and they're going to and, and and that and those packages come with liquor license. Um, those bar services run about eight hundred, somewhere between. Five and eight hundred dollars um, for a um, um, per event. Now um, we have to supply the liquor, so we're looking at probably about on a you know on a good night we'll probably spend about fifteen hundred um, dollars on liquor. Um, you know, um, but you know as you know the liquor is watered down, so we'll be able to stretch it out and probably you know stretch it out to where we're only spending you know for the week somewhere. Fifteen to eighteen hundred dollars per week on liquor. Okay, now, so but that's the revenue that we're expecting from um, just those events. Now, <clears throat> if you notice here, we also have the um, huge warehouse space. This space is going to be renovated, and we're going to be using it for the club thirty plus parties, banquets, live shows and live musical guests, small type concerts. You know, um, um, guests from the 80s, 90s, and early 2000s, you know, our music genre. The annual revenue goal for the events that we're gonna be having, and we're talking small type concerts with with artists like, you know, old school artists like Keith Sweat, Johnny Gill, Stevie Nicks, you know, you know uh, people like that. Um, um, Charlie Wilson, um, we, we we shouldn't have um, too much trouble booking those types of venues and those type of um, artists to attend this venue. This area right here can hold up to 500 people. Okay, um, once we put the seating in and everything, um, you know, it, it, you know, it can hold up to 500 people. I've already contacted a group of stage builders that can construct us a a um, stage that. Can, that can be taken down and put back up as we need it. Um, so <clears throat> the annual revenue goal that we're expecting from those type of events are in the neighborhood of $300,000 to $500,000 yearly. Um, this is what the property looks like. And because it does have a huge parking lot, um, there's parking here and uh, uh, over here on the side here that's not in this picture, there's a huge parking area over there too. So this will be great for us to have community events like 
you know, a Tallahassee barbecue cook-off festival, Tallahassee seafood festival, soul food festival, um, Jamaican jerk festival. Um, Darren Stevens, um, who is part of our network, he is one of the sponsors and the um, and the and and the um, 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 the creators of the Jamaican Jerk Festival down in Tampa, Florida. They just had one, and I think he said they had close to thirty thousand people show up. Um, it's very hugely successful uh, festival that they had down there, and he has already made a commitment that if we can bring this about, he will schedule a festival, a Jamaican jerk festival here in Tallahassee that we will co-sponsor with them. And when they do those type of things, they bring in all types of Caribbean musical guests, um, vendors, um, there's sponsors from JetBlue and the airlines and all different type of sponsors. Uh, 411 Pain, um, you know, that the accident, um, you know, the lawyer service, they're one of the big sponsors with them too. <clears throat> so he's already um, made a commitment that if we can bring this about, then um, he would be happy to schedule a uh, Jamaican Jerk Festival here in Tallahassee. And in this area here, there is there, is, there are like six huge recreation parks that we can rent, um, that we can lease from the from the city of Tallahassee um, to put on, you know, any huge type of event like that, um, uh, concerts and all types of things that come with um, those types of festivals. So um, there's a lot of revenue that would be gained from the community events as well. Now let's get into the entrepreneurs lounge because all the stuff that we talked about so far has been about the after hour events, um, the concerts. Um, the community events and things that go on after business hours. Now let's get into what type of revenue can we earn from regular business hours, okay? Uh, from regular business hours, we have the Entrepreneur's Lounge, okay? Um, if, if, if someone wants to come in and, and, and just hang out in the lounge and conduct business on a day-to-day -day basis, it's $25 per day if they don't have a membership. So if they're just coming in off the street and say, hey, I want to, you know, uh, bring in my laptop and, and sit here in the lounge and conduct business or I got some people that, I'm, you know, I'm, um, that I want to meet and bring in, it's $25 um, per day. And um, this kind of gives you a look at how we're going to, you know, uh, create the ambiance of that lounge um, um, type of effect. Um, now, we have a membership that will cost $45 per month. If you want to rent a desk for a day, it will be $50 plus the membership fee. $350 per month will get someone unlimited access to the shared workspaces. But a dedicated desk will cost around $275 monthly. We're also going to have the office by the day, no contract, no lease. Because there are a lot of people in Tallahassee who are um, satellite business owners. You know, they, you know, they they run their own businesses, either a home business or they're running a business on the go. They don't need a permanent office space, but there are instances where they may need an office just for a day or or a day or two, or whatever the case may be. So we're going to provide a service that's much needed here um, for that. So those individuals will be able to come in and they can rent an office for that day. Okay, no contract, no lease. Um, to rent an office for a day is be $125 for non-members <clears throat> or $75 with a $45 monthly membership. So those people who are who have a membership We'll be able to rent the office um, by the day for seventy-five dollars per day. Non-members will pay one twenty-five. Someone just walking in off the street, say, "Hey, I need an office space for the day. If we have it available, it's going to be one hundred twenty-five dollars." Now, let's talk about the partnership opportunities, the equity partnerships, because that's what we're here for. We are seeking equity partners. Now, um, first of all, what is a a equity business partner? 
being an equity partner means that the partner buys into the business in order to receive a cut of the business's profits later. So in other words, as an equity partner, depending on how much you're buying, you will receive monthly or quarterly dividends from the profits that we are generating for the entire business, okay? Now, <coughs> excuse me, now, you can come in, um, the percentages that we are offering is a half a percent for $1,000, okay? So it'd be a half percent for $1,000 um, investment. Or it trans that translates into, if you put up $5,000, you'll get 2.5% equity ownership. If you put up $10,000, you would get 5% equity ownership. You can put in $1,000 and just get a half percent. You can put in $2,000, get 1%, so, and so on and so on, okay? Um, equity dividends can be paid monthly or quarterly, your choice. If you want yours paid monthly, you'll receive your monthly dividends on the profits that the business generates. Now, what we mean by that is after all expenses have been paid, okay, like if we're doing the um, the, the lounge every Wednesday night, Saturday, um, um, Friday night and Sunday night, after we pay the bartenders, after we pay the bartender, after we pay the DJ, a good DJ here in this area charges about $500 to $750 per night. That's not, that's not bad. Okay. So, um, not, especially not when you're thinking about the type of revenue that we're going to be generating. Um, we've already discussed about the bar. <clears throat> for the packages that they offer um, to do the bar service and they bring their own liquor license and all of their own uh, um, certificates. They supply the bartenders and all the equipment. We just supply the liquor. That usually runs about 800 um, for a large scale event. It can go up as much as 1200 bucks, but for something what we're trying to do on a, um, on a nightly basis, three nights a week, it's going to run us about $800 per night on something like that. All right. Now, equity dividends, again, can be paid monthly or quarterly. OK, let me check and see if we got anybody else who's trying to get into the um, meeting here. All right. So so monthly or quarterly, the dividends can be paid. OK, Note When we have reached forty nine point nine percent of equity ownership or. $99,900 in capital raise, <coughs> equity ownership buy-ins will be permanently suspended. We're not trying to give up majority share of the business. Okay, That's not what we're trying to do. We're, we still want to maintain majority share. So we're only giving up 49.9% is what we are willing to part with. Once we reach that goal, or once we have raised $99,900, this opportunity no longer exists to become an equity partner. So literally, it is first come, first serve. Okay? That's, that's basically what it is. So um, equity owners will appear on the company's Florida Sun Beers Registry because we will be registered as a Florida co um, corporation all equity owners will appear as equity owners on the Florida Sun Biz Register. So if someone says that, you know, um, you, you, you can literally tell someone, I'm one of the owners of that business. I'm one of the owners of um, Club 30 Plus or the Entrepreneur's Lounge. Okay, I'm one of the owners of that business. Okay, now, um, equity owners... We have zero administrative authority, okay? Because look, <laughs> I've learned <clears throat> from experience, you cannot run a company by committee. You just can't. You can't have more than one chief. You can't have more than one ex you know, chief executive officer. You know, you can't run a company by committee. It just does not work. Okay, because someone wants to do one thing, another person wants to do something else. You know, they want to have this, want to have no, 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 no. There's no way for you to run a company successfully by committee. Okay, um, 
business is not a democracy. It just isn't. Never has been, never will be. Okay? Business is a either a monarchy or, or for the lack of a better word, a dictatorship. Okay? That's just how it is. I mean, you have people who will make suggestions to the CEO or the president of the company, but that CEO or that president makes the final decision and that's it. There's no more discussion after that because they are in charge of the path of that company. They are in charge of the vision for that company. Okay. So equity owners, we have zero administrative authority. All administrative authority will reside with the primary principal business owner. In this case, that would be me. Okay. So um, when it comes to decisions on what's being done with the business or how it's being ran or things like that, yes, I'm open to suggestions. But but when it's all said and done, excuse me, let some people in. When it's all said and done, okay, the final decision on what's going to be done or how it's going to be done or what direction we're going to take <clears throat> or the vision of how the business is going to proceed or how the company is going to proceed with this growth pattern is going to rest with the CEO, okay, with the primary business owner, all right? And and that's the only way to successfully run a business, all right? Um, equity ownership basically gives you all the ability to earn money from a business that is being operated. Now, eventually, uh, in in the beginning, I am going to be very, very, very hands-on with just about everything. But eventually, I'm going to hire a business manager to run the after-hours portion of this business. The business hours portion, I'll still remain hands-on with everything for as long as I'm alive, <laughs> you know, as long as the business is successful. <clears throat> but at some point in time, I'm going to turn over the after-hours um, 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 part of the business to a, to, a, to a business manager, someone who's experienced at running those types of things, and they will take their instructions from me and they will um, um, be in charge of running the after-hour events and things of that nature. All right. All right. Um, now, let's, let, let's break this down, okay? Let's just say if you came in and you was a, um, you put up $2,000 and you got 1%, okay? Let's just make this very simple, you know, very straightforward. If you became a 1% equity share owner, okay? Um, and let's look at the expected uh, revenue that can be generated from this. Let's go to our calculator. Let me find my calculator here. There we go. Pull it up. All right. You got roughly $1.2 million <clears throat> from the weekly uh, lounge events from um, every Wednesday night. <clears throat> Friday night and Sunday night, okay? From the liquor sales, cover charge, everything that's involved with that, you got about $1.2 million. Now, let's look at, at the expenses, you know, on that, okay? So if you look at that with the, um, let's break down the expenses. Um, the bartending service packages are going to run about 800 bucks. We're going to say 850 bucks um, per, per night. That times on um, three nights um, per week is going to be about twenty five fifty. Okay, so you're looking at about twenty five fifty a week on the bartending services. All right, and you take that, you know, and that times fifty two weeks in a year. So yearly, you're looking at about one hundred thirty two thousand. Let's just make mine off to one hundred thirty three thousand dollars in um for of the bartending services. Then you got your DJ. So $133,000. DJ is going to run you about $500 to $700 um, on the DJ service. Let's just say $650 or $600. Um, three nights a week. 
So DJ service is going to run you about $1,800 a week. That times 52 weeks, you got about $93,600 that we're going to be paying for DJ service now. Some of y'all are probably saying, well, that's a lot of money to pay a DJ um, per year. Well, if you want good people, if you want you know, if you want quality stuff, then you're going to have to pay for it. Um, so, and this is going to be one of those types of venues where it, it's not for everyone. Okay. Like I said, it's going to be a dress code. It's going to be for 30 plus. It's going to be for people who are business savvy and business minded where they want to come and connect and make business deals. So <clears throat> that's, that's the atmosphere we are going for. We're not going for a club mentality. We're not going for, you know, every, every, every jit and jitsu to come in and, you know, cause trouble or anything like that. That's not what we're looking for, okay? Um, we're trying to bring something different to this area. So you're looking at about $93,600 on that. So let's just say $94,000 on DJ service. So on the bar service, we're looking at um, $133,000, and then we're looking at about $94,000 there. So what's that? That plus 133000 one thirty two six. So you're looking at about two hundred twenty six thousand two hundred dollars <throat> in the overhead, you know, on that. The yearly um the the yearly lease is gonna run us forty forty three thousand dollars per year. Okay, the lease is about thirty five hundred dollars per month. That's what the lease is. I've already taken care of that and secured the lease. I've already taken care of that. But that is still one of our expenses. So you take out, so you got to add to that the yearly lease is about 43000 I think it was going to be $43,200 is what he told me. And I uh, went ahead and took care of that um, for the whole year. So um, yeah, it was forty three thousand two hundred dollars. Yeah, that's what that's what I that's the cashier's check. That's in it. So <clears throat> we're looking at about two hundred and sixty nine thousand four hundred dollars on our face value expenses on that side of it. Now you got expenses on the other stuff that we're going to be doing. Like if we're if we're doing um, the concerts. You got to have crews that are going to come in and set the stage up. So each time we have a concert, we're going to have to have a crew of people that we can get them from uh, from the labor halls. <clears throat> we can get them from the labor halls, <clears throat> very inexpensive help, and um and, and get them paid. Um, a crew to set up something like that probably going to need about twelve people. So you're looking at about twelve people. Um, so you're looking at about twelve people, and the labor halls here. If you're hiring people just to do that type of labor, it's going to run about $28 per hour because half of that goes to the workers, another half, and then a a dollar or two goes towards their insurance. So we're going to look at about $28 per hour in in stage hands and setting up those stages and things like that. Um, It's probably, you're going to need them for at least four hours to set it up and then about four hours to break it back down. So it's going to be eight hours for each event. Now, I don't know exactly how many events that we're going to have, but um, to give you just a roundabout feel that, 12 times $28 an hour, $336, and that times eight hours, about two thousand six six hundred and and eighty eight dollars each time we we do a concert and set something like that up. Let's say we have well, five six concerts per year. If we do five or six um, concerts um, per year, thinking about sixteen thousand one hundred twenty eight dollars on on the cruise to, to set up um, the concerts. <coughs> now, of course, you have got you know, ticket prices and all that type of stuff. The average concert price here in Tallahassee in this area, I looked it up, is somewhere between $25 and 70 bucks, depending on who's coming. Since we're doing a lot of old school stuff and a lot of old school type artists, we're not going to be up around that $75 to $100 per ticket. 
we're going to be closer to that $25 <coughs> to $30 per ticket, to $35 per ticket. So when you're looking at about, and and one of our warehouses that we have that was set up for that, it can hold 500 people. Now, we have access to three warehouses. So we have full access if we want to put on a, a huge multifunction type concert where you have a different artist in each different warehouse or something like that, we can accommodate 1,500 people total. <clears throat> but if we just got you know, one group of artists or one artist showing up or whatever the case may be, you know, at a concert and, and we're just in one of the warehouse space, the one that we have 24-7, because that's part of, of the space that we're leasing, um, <clears throat> that one can hold up, up to 500 people. <coughs> <coughs> you all have to excuse me again. I'm I'm still <coughs> recovering from pneumonia. So <coughs> and I do apologize. I do apologize. <coughs> okay, let me see. See if I can <coughs> <clears throat> Let's see if I can make this happen. All right. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to be looking at about 500 people. 500 people, average cover charge for a contract we're going to be charging will be somewhere around uh, 35 to 40 bucks. So about $20,000, and we're doing six concerts per year. Um, that's $120,000 minus that $16,128. <coughs> so that leaves about $103,000 from concerts if we only do six, six per year. Now, <coughs> we're not really going to get into the other type of events that we'll be able to book um, and sponsor by having this type of venue. But all together, we're looking at that. Um, um, so we're looking at about all together from that um, all together in revenue, we're looking at that plus maybe about $200,000 in expenses off of that. 1.2 million, so we're looking at about a million on revenue there. And then um, for the community events, we're looking at about on the low end, $300,000 um, per year. So what we're expecting is somewhere around there. Now, if we are giving up <coughs> 45 to 49% of our equity to our equity business owners, our partners. Let's, let's say if you, you know, got one percent. Okay, so your yearly dividend from 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 that amount will be fourteen thousand and thirty eight dollars. You know, and that's basically. But on a two thousand dollar investment, you got one percent ownership, so you're collecting fourteen thousand thirty eight dollars per year on your dividends from your one percent ownership. If you got two percent ownership, it's it's twice that. If you got five percent ownership, it goes up higher. If you got ten percent ownership, so whatever your percentage is, <clears throat> that's gonna be your dividend on percentage that you're gonna be earning from a business that you don't have to run because you don't have any administrative authority, you are just an equity business partner or an equity owner in the business. Now, <clears throat> for those of you who are interested, if you are interested, hold on, I think we got some questions here. Let me see if someone's got a question. Was entertainers fee factored in? Um, no. But we make exceptions, you know, for those two. Entertainers fee, um, with if 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 you're booking an entertainer, they're getting a portion 
of the ticket sales. A lot of these old school artists, it's not like we're trying to book Beyonce. Okay, no, we're not doing that. <laughs> we're not going to be booking Beyonce and Lil Wayne and, you know, and all these people that, that say, I got to have our $30,000 just for showing up. That's not who we're booking. We're booking people like Keith Sweat. You know, he's old school. You know, I, mean, I hope he's not listening, but you know, no one, no one's really knocking down the door to come see Keith Sweat. People our age, yeah, we'll we'll pay to go see him. But the majority of people out there, they're not gonna pay to go see Keith Sweat, okay? Or, or you know, New Edition, okay? Or you know, Bill, Bill DeVoe or Charlie Wilson. What? Well, maybe Charlie Wilson because he done got back popular, but. <laughs> we are talking old school from the 80s, 90s, and 2000s genre music. So artists like that, they are, are really at the, they're at the point in their careers where if they're still doing concerts or they're still, still taking bookings, they're trying to fund their retirement, trying to fund their, you know, their, you know, their old age, you know, the, you know, their years and things like that. <clears throat> um, if you miss part of the, um, this, this uh, what's call it, then you'll be able to review it. It's being recorded live on Facebook, and I'm recording it now also, too. Um, liability insurance and things like that, uh, those are, I've already looked at some packages on those, and it's not really that expensive, though, when you think about it. We factor that in into our, you know, no cost overhead. I mean, right now, with the way we're sitting right now, with everything, if we only hit 50, if we only, if we're only 50% correct, if we're only 50% um, correct, someone who invests $2,000 will still recoup, you know, roughly seven to $8,000 um, per year. So, I mean, that's a win-win no matter how you look at it. And the way it is right now, if you got, you know, 1% ownership, and you know you, re, you know you're looking at about fourteen thousand dollars now. I haven't even gotten into <coughs> discussing. We haven't even gotten into discussing some of the other things that we're going to be doing with this property, <coughs> because with the revenue that we are generating from here, this is going to spin off into a second property that I'm talking to a realtor about, and this is this property is for our MWR financial um, um, guaranteed career placement campus. Cause you know, I own, I'm the owner and CEO of, I'm sorry, not MWR financial. Um, I'm the owner and CEO of the RBBS Logistics Learning Centers. And we have something that we're gonna be um, starting up this year, um, guaranteed career placement events. Now, what we were doing with that, <clears throat> we were initially going to be conducting these in different cities four times um, per year, like Miami, Fort Lauderdale, Jacksonville, you know, and Tallahassee, you know, four times a year. It was going to be in a different city every four months, and then we were going to branch out, you know, over the country. But the problem that we were running into is government agencies that we are going to be government agencies are going to be paying to send their people to these training center um, events like they do with a trucking company like the VA they sent me to trucking school they paid $6,500 for me to attend trucking school for four weeks with no guarantee that I was going to graduate and no guarantee that I was going to land a trucking job they also paid four hundred, paid me four hundred and fifty dollars per week while I was in trucking school. They also paid my hotel expenses while I was in trucking school. When I graduated from trucking school, when I got a job with Covenant Transport, the six weeks I was on the training truck, the VA continued to pay me four hundred fifty dollars a week. On top of Covenant was paying me seven fifty per week. So, uh. Places like the Veterans Administration, Workforce Plus, Job Source One, Food Stamps, Housing Authority, the Federal Corrections, 
they will pay the tuition to send the, their people to these events so that they can get better jobs and get off their programs. What we are going to be offering is guaranteed career placement. Why? Because through the RBBS Logistics Learning Center and the National Dispatch Network, I have developed a huge network of logistics business owners, freight brokers firms, dispatch firms, everybody who is a part of our network. We have about 800 active subscription paying members to our network. They are all either freight own their own freight brokers firms or they own their own dispatch firms. Those same people are who we're going to be choosing and, and training to be the instructors at this school. Okay? They're going to be the instructors at this school and we are paying them $25,000 per event. Each event, we're going to have a minimum of 45 students who's going to be attending. It's going to be a week to two weeks long. Okay? The tuition is $7,500. So if you take, so if you're looking at that, this is something that I haven't even, I wasn't really going to, to discuss with this, but, you know, it is part of um, some of the, you know, the funding on my end is going to go towards funding the second property that I'm looking to acquire for that purpose. And so, Equity shareholders will also become equity shareholders in that venture as well. So, um, and, and just to give you some numbers on that, if you're looking you know, uh, of uh, 45 students minimum, because we won't we won't have a class until we get at least 45 students. Now, we're going to be getting people from the VA. The veterans vote we have. We're going to get people from housing authority. We're going to be getting people who are going to be sent over from workforce plus and job source one. Now, here's the kicker. The realtor that I am in contact with on this property is also on the board that, uh, that makes the decision for job source one and career source one to approve our accreditation so that they can start sending people to our school. And he is also um, 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 on the VA board that approves for the VA to start sending people to our school. So after talking with him, he has already pretty much assured me that if we can make this happen and if we can have a stationary location, because that was the problem. We were having satellite locations at different cities. <clears throat> and that's why the VA and those organizations, they were hesitant on approving our accreditation because we did not have a stationary location. Y'all give me just one moment. That's my wife calling. Hey, baby. Hello? Yeah, baby. I was just calling to pick your house Okay, well, I'm in the middle of my broadcast, okay? All right, baby, I love you. Love you too. All right. That was my wife. She she just finished up a job. You know, she has her own cleaning service and she, you know, cleans these um office spaces and stuff, you know, at night. So she just finished up. She's on the way back home. But <clears throat> he is he and the reason why we was having problems getting the accreditation, because we did not have a central location to where we would conduct our training. So through that, we were able I'm able to work a deal with him so that we can now have our own campus-like setting. And I'll show that to you all in just a second. But minimum of 45 students um, who attend. Um, tuition is $7,500, and that's paid by the government agencies, not paid by the students. This is key. So $7,500 we paid by the government agencies. Look at that, $337,000 for each event. Okay, now each course or class is only a week to two weeks long. Now, we will be flying in our instructors, paying for them to come in, but that's a whole lot less expensive than paying the airfare, hotel expenses, food, and everything else for all the students who would have been flying in to the different locations. Now, we are still paying for the students to come to Tallahassee, but guess what? This 
campus that we are going to be leasing is directly behind the the huge Econo Lodge, so students can get we can book their rooms there, and then they can walk to the courses, which is like right next door. Okay, so um, and when that when I build this out um, before with all the expenses for the Uber and Lyft rides, they will have four Uber and Lyft rides um, um, per day, three meals. Uh, three restaurant meals um, per day, you know, uh, building about $45 um, per meal, um, uh, hotel accommodations, all that was taken care of. But now we won't have the expense of a conference, a hotel conference room that we would have had to pay for for an entire week or two weeks. That was a huge expense right there. With having our own location, we won't have that expense. Yes, we still have about $45,000 per year that we're paying for our campus, but that makes things a lot easier and it makes it what we now can get approved. So what we were looking at before, we were looking at five instructors paying them $25,000 each per class, that per, um, 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 per event. So, we look at, so that was $125,000 right there off the top paying the instructors, right? Leaves over $212,000. The expenses for bringing the students down and paying all of their travel expenses, hotel expenses, everything else, it was <coughs> it was about $72,000 um, for, you know, for 45 students. But now that we are going to have our own location, we cut into that, so our expenses is only going to be about forty-eight thousand dollars now, or so. Let's just say it's around fifty thousand dollars. So now we're looking at a lot less on our expenses. So that that leaves us with one hundred and sixty-two thousand dollars per event. Now we're going to be having four of these per year. So we're still looking at earning someone in the neighborhood of $650,000 per year. Now, if you are one of our equity share, um, equity uh, business owners, whatever percentage you have, you get a percentage of that figure right there. If you have 1%, if you have 5% or whatever the case may be, that's that's just more dividend money um, and that you're earning. So, uh, uh, and just to show you all what, what this campus looks like now. Um, this is basically what we're, it, um, is what I'm working on. Let me get rid of this for this part of it. This is uh, the area right here. We will have an entire floor, okay? In building C, this is building A. We will be in building C, but we, we will have an entire, we have an entire floor, okay? And it's the Edgewater Complex. And, and and the hotel is literally like right there behind that mattress thing. And, and this is all part of the Edgewater Campus. And this is like some of the interior of the floor that that uh, we would have. We would have three large conference areas to conduct classes. We have, I think you see we have four, no, we have seven. We have seven private offices. Common area. And, and 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 this would run. And this is going to run me about forty five thousand dollars a year, <clears throat> and that's what it's going to run me about forty five grand um, per year um, to secure this campus. Okay, but um, but that's that's just you know just future stuff down the line on top of what we're doing here now. Um, so for those of you who are interested, if you are interested in um, becoming a equity partner in the Club 30 Plus Entrepreneurs Lounge. 
and Business Center. Um, you can you can contact me, you can reach me, or you can send your um, inquiry to pull it up down here. Calvin Butler at makingwealthreal.org. I can share this. Um, 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 let me see if I can share this with all of you all who are here. Let me see. Let me try and share this with you all. So I'm, I'm going to try and share the PDF with you all. Hold on. Let me see if I can share this PDF. Uh, yeah, file. Okay, let me see if I can test this file. Uh, Dropbox, Microsoft, SharePoint. Uh, okay. I can't do it like that. <laughs> I'm going to try to share this file if I can. Uh, let me try this. I'm going to try sh and share the link. And you all see if you all can pull the, pull this link up. You know if I share it. Someone click on that link and tell me if you can pull this PDF up. Has anyone been able to click on it? No. Can you copy it and then paste it and click on it? Try it that way. Can anyone do it that way? Has, it, has anyone tried it? Has anyone tried to copy and paste it? Hello? Everyone. All right. No one's tried to copy and paste it? Uh, someone says that it didn't work. Okay. All right. Um, ugh, how can I share this link? Well, if 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 you all shoot me an email, I can share it with you all through the email. So, if you shoot me an email um, to this right here, y'all shoot me an email to this right here, then I can um, send you a link. I can send it to you. I can send this send this PDF to you. All right. Um, questions? Does anybody have any questions that they want to? Um, I'll present it this time. Any questions? Questions? Open the floor up for questions. Let me check my Facebook page and see if anybody's had any questions on Facebook. Yeah, yeah go ahead. I, I have a question. Uh, more so about the, uh, uh, what do you call the guaranteed career placement? Yes, ma'am. For that, for uh, for VA the veterans. Yes, ma'am. Um, do I have to be a what do you call a a, a, a franchisee? Uh, no. In order to to benefit from uh, referring the various uh, well. Well, well, if well, 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 hold on. We have a we have a franchise that we offer the the RBBS Logistics Love Center franchise that we offer to all of our um, um, network members. If you are a member of the National Dispatchers Network, you can get your own RBBS Logistics Love Center franchise, and you don't have to. Uh, I mean, you just pay a monthly fee for it. There's no interest on it. For our for our network members now, if you're not a network member, you got to put down ten percent, which is four hundred ninety nine dollars. Cause the franchise is four thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollars, so you have to put down four hundred ninety nine dollars 
and you can finance it for one year, two year, or three years. And there is interest on that. Now, if you are a network member, if you're part of our network, if you are a subscription paying member to the the RBBS Logistics Learning Center and the National Dispatcher Network, <clears throat> you can finance your franchise interest-free. No down payment, interest-free. You just send me something saying, hey, I would like to take advantage of the interest-free um, 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 our RBBS our franchise. And basically, I will send you the invite to add you to my Square account add you to our back office and everything so you can then go in and sign people up for the different stuff that we offer through our BBS uh, Logistics Learning Center, including the guaranteed career placement events. Now, franchise owners get 50% of the revenue from all the things that we offer through our BBS um, Logistics Learning Center. So if someone, if you book someone um, for the uh, guaranteed career placement events, $7,500. <clears throat> you get 50% of the revenue after the expenses. You understand? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, if you're not, if you don't have a franchise and you just refer someone to us, yeah, we'll pay you like 20%. Okay. But okay. But, but, okay. but you're not earning like you are um, with the franchise, you're getting fifty percent. You see okay. what I'm saying? So, and, and that fifty percent on everything you send over to us. So, if you sign someone up for our um, uh, national dispatch network, you know um, the learning center, and they pay three hundred forty nine dollars on the enrollment fee, you get half of that. When they start their monthly subscription of twenty nine dollars um, per month or thirty nine ninety nine per month, you get half of that. You also get to exercise um, your um, option to become a consultant with RBBS and you can do private consultations and book private, private consultations. Like we've had several people, Miss Larissa Pompey, I think she did a private con um, consult or Darren did one or I think someone did a private consultation and, they, and they've already started earning because we pay on the private consultation, you get 75% of that $100 per hour that we charge for private consultations. <clears throat> so you're getting $75 um, per hour. I mean, last year before I shut before I shut down the private consultation, because it just became too much for me. I mean, I literally earned about $160,000, $175,000 that year just from doing private consultations. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's a very, because people want that one-on-one -on -one type of training or that one-on-one -on -one type of mentorship, and people will pay you for you for, for your knowledge and your expertise. Yeah, I, I've actually come across a couple of individuals asking me some questions off off the record. Yeah, you might as well get paid for it. I, <laughs> you know? I mean, don't 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 just you know. I mean, people get paid for their knowledge now. You know, I mean, now if you want to give it away, that's for you. But me personally. If I'm on the phone with someone and they call me up and they and and I tell people now when they call up, if I see you do ask a question and we've been on the phone for more than five minutes, I'll tell them you need to schedule a private consult. Mm -hmm. And that's just how it is. You know, time okay. time is valuable. Okay. All right. All right. So I, I would just I would just email you about the. Uh, yeah. Establishing a franchise. Yeah, just email me. Okay. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Does anybody else have any questions about our Club Thirty event? You know, uh, the Club Thirty and the the equity ownership. Anybody have any questions? All right. All right. With that being said, um, you know, I I thank you all. Um, those of you uh, um, who attended, you'll be able to watch this video. It is being um, recorded live on Facebook. So you can go to my page on Facebook and, and see the live um, recording of it. You can also, um, I'll also um, um, post it on YouTube and, and make it available on Facebook through the YouTube posting as well. Um, now, now, now here again, 
once we um, have a at least forty, once we get reach uh, forty nine um, point nine percent of the equity share out or ninety nine thousand nine hundred dollars in capital raise, um, this opportunity is suspended. So uh, it it literally is first come first serve. And those of you who do elect to become um, equity business owners, you receive your equity uh, partnership agreement and your equity owner's certificate showing your percentage of ownership, okay? So um, those of you who are interested, contact me at calvin.butler at makingwealthreal.org or you can call me toll free at 800-277-5204. So calvin.butler at makingwealthreal.org or you can contact me at toll free at 800-277-5204. Thank you all. I thank you all for putting up with my scratchy voice. Um, um, you know, I've been trying to take some time off to, to let my voice heal. Um, but you know, uh, it's 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 you know it's been rough. So I'm I'm trying to bounce back from this pneumonia. Um, you know, it, it hit me pretty hard. But you know, I'm I'm tough. <laughs> I can uh, you know I, you know I can take it. So uh, let's see someone chatting here. Uh, oh, and thank you, Donna. You know, I I I'm, you know my wife is trying to take care of me and fear run her business at the same time. But, uh, but, you know, we're making things happen. All right. I appreciate everybody. Thank you all again. I hope you all enjoyed uh, tonight's presentation. And I hope you all found this to be educational as well as useful. And um, I, I think, we're, you know, we're going to bring something to the Tallahassee area that's much needed here um, for the, uh, the older crowd. Thank you all again. I appreciate y'all. Y'all have a good night. Ha, ha, ha.